Hey guys, Claire here, and today I'm going to share with you one of my new favorite old cookbooks. This one is called At Home on the Range, or How to Make Friends with Your Stove. And this is a really cute illustration of a lady reading a newspaper in front of an old-fashioned stove with her little wee cat. And this actually got reprinted recently, so I think you should be able to find this very easily. It's by Margaret Yardley Potter. It's kind of this really wonderful combination of autobiography and cookbook. So it has like a bit of everything. And it's really about this woman, Margaret, who basically bounced around to all different kinds of living situations throughout the 30s and 40s. She worked as a maid or like a server in a very fancy household in the 1920s. And then when she got married herself, also tried to kind of host formal dinners. And then there was a formal dinner that went terribly wrong. Literally everything that could go wrong went wrong. Her menu was overcomplicated, even though she thought it was really simple at the time. She was gonna have her servers come help, but um, the butler that was gonna help got drunk, so he didn't show up. And then the nurse that was gonna come help her out ended up having to take care of the baby because her baby came down with croup and then the power went out. <laughs> so it's like all the things went wrong, but they ended up having a really good time anyway, despite all of that mess, uh, just eating delicious food by candlelight. And she kind of quickly realized that simple food is best. And what really matters as a hostess is just making sure that your guests are comfortable and happy. So I love the message of this book and the recipes are really great. Um, the way that it's written is very typical of the time. This was written in the forties. So typically today when we see cookbooks, there's the list of the ingredients followed by the recipe. And maybe there's head notes or a little bit of description at the very top. With cookbooks written kind of from the 40s and earlier, they're usually written in paragraph format. So for instance, for hash browns, you'll see um, there's actually a whole section where she's talking about a, you know breakfast that she enjoyed once. Then big cups of strong black coffee and huge pieces of cake or pie. And while the sun set, someone stirred up the fire and a young voice started, be my little baby bumblebee. Or maybe a newer song like by the beautiful sea. Is it any wonder I liked hash browns, which is kind of, I don't know where that came from, but it goes right into it. So she has a story and then hash browns is inserted into it. It's very interesting just like seeing it written this way because then even by the end of it, she's talking about how, you know, things you can do with them, how you can turn it into country fries, um, then like potatoes are gratin, macaroni au gratin, which is basically mac and cheese. Um, but there's all these kind of really classic, simple dishes. And the menus actually sound really wonderful, to be honest. Like sometimes when you look at a cookbook that's from the 30s and 40s, you'll see stuff that kind of isn't really for our palate today. Things that are a little fussy. So like lots of aspics <laughs> and jellies and kind of weird cheese courses and tea sandwiches and stuff like that where you're like, what? Anyway, the recipes can usually seem a little weird, but her menus are actually very beautiful sounding and really, really simple. Here, I'll, I'll grab an example. Ooh, there's for Sunday dinner, meat cakes with broiled tomatoes, potatoes au gratin, peas, drop biscuits, and pie. So anyway, her style is obviously very simple and that was very much kind of informed by her experience as a young woman. This is a photo of her at the time she wrote the book, so no longer a young woman, but very wise, very intelligent, and uh, just a really great writer. So anyway, I'm really enjoying this book. I actually plan on cooking a lot from it. So I'll keep you guys posted on how that works out. It's funny, sometimes vintage cookbooks are more for reading than for cooking, if that makes sense. Uh, but anyway, so this one, I think I'm actually gonna be cooking from it. Well, thank you guys so much for learning a little bit about at home on the range or how to make friends with your stove. So as always, I got this book from Bonnie Slotnick's in New York City, and I was so excited. Every time I visit Bonnie, she always tells me that one of you guys watching these videos go and check out her store. And that makes me very happy to know that you guys pop in there and are interested in seeing all the awesome things she sells. So thank you for that. And please continue doing that. Other good resources are eBay, um, ABE Books, sometimes Etsy, usually not though. Um, and I'm not sure where the reprint is for this, but I feel like the reprint, I bet you could actually find it on Amazon, to be honest. Anyway, hope that helps. Hope you guys check this book out and enjoy it, and I'll see you next time. Bye.